Today we're going to see if we can color correct our own footage to make it look like Blade Runner 2049. I think that one of the most beautiful films of the past decade is Blade Runner 2049. And aside from all of the other amazing things that that movie was able to accomplish, the color for me stands out as the most impressive part. So I wanted to see if I could shoot my own scene that kind of looks like Blade Runner 2049 and color it to make it look exactly like Blade Runner 2049. Let's see if we can figure this out. <laughs> Ooh, it's gonna be a fun one. Okay, um, so the scene that I wanted to do from Blade Runner was this one. Now, there's a couple of distinct differences about this scene that I think should be noted. One, it's in the desert. Um, I live in the middle of Tennessee. Uh, we don't have a desert. <laughs> so I'm at this scene. I just found like a random field. I wanted to get a scene that was really, really clean. Uh, and that was the point, was to get just me as the main subject. Oh, speaking of me, I'm dressed in my best Blade Runner attire. Anyways, got the camera set up behind me right now. I have it set up on a 50 millimeter lens. I'm stopped down to about F8. I'm just gonna give it a go. We'll see what happens. Hopefully that works. <laughs> I have no idea. After having finished, shot the scene a couple of different ways, a few things have come to mind. One, I need to figure out a way to cover up the background so it looks like we're walking into like an infinite fog. Which brings me to the second problem, which is creating atmosphere inside of the shot. Because obviously today, it's a very clear day, there's no fog. I don't have a crew to add a bunch of smoke to my scene or haze or anything like that. So I'm gonna have to create that myself. The third thing is making sure that the image doesn't fall apart while I'm trying to put that quintessential Blade Runner 2049 look on the image. All right, let's go back to the office and give this thing a shot. I've got all the footage imported into Premiere and put in its rightful place. I pulled the selects and we're ready to get to work. So the first thing that I'm gonna do with both clips is put an adjustment layer on top of it because I prefer to make my color corrections on an adjustment layer rather than on the footage because it just makes it a lot easier to take a step back and edit non-destructively. Right, something else that I wanted to do was do a little bit of resizing. Uh, I wasn't quite on my center mark and the shot was a little bit wider than I wanted it to be so did a little bit of a resizing so it looks a little bit more accurate. Now. Here's where I'm gonna start running into like some interesting problems. And that is getting rid of the background because I don't really know how to do that. So this is gonna be me figuring it out with you. <laughs> Lucky for me, I shot it against a background that has a relatively straight line from where the grass stops and the trees start. So what I'm gonna try to do is mask out all of the trees and try to get a nice smooth feather so that it just kind of looks like it's fading into the background and hopefully be able to cover that with some sort of texture or mist or some sort of digital asset that I might be able to use to make it look like we're kind of walking into an infinite desert. Right, so now I have my body separated from the background so I can actually toggle on and toggle off my background and it's the exact same frame. So now I can mask just the background out and not affect my body or the foreground. So this makes it a lot easier to separate things. I'm just creating layers here. It's very simple stuff. Right, so in the essence of creating layers, what I'm gonna do now is go to the layer below my After Effects thing where I use the roto brush and mask out the background. And what I'm gonna do is go to artgrid.io and pick some stock footage to replace the background with it. So it looks like it just kind of keeps on going. That's the idea. Okay, so I went to Artlist and I found this really great image of just a tree in the background. Artlist is great because you can search for very specific parameters like I wanted a wide shot, I wanted it of a field, and I wanted there to be no people in it. And that was like one of the first shots that I found when I searched for that. So I went ahead and downloaded it and I threw it into my editor and right away it looks pretty amazing. <laughs> With this all I have to do is make it look like the rest of my scene. So that's going to be decreasing the sharpness level, and then a little bit of color correction. And I basically have the composition that I want. And then after that, I can really start working on the color. And that's where things really become Blade Runner-y. So let's go ahead and do that. First things first, uh, I shot this in log. So I'm gonna put a 709 LUT onto an adjustment layer as my basic starting point. There's a bunch of different kinds that you can use. The one that's my favorite to use is the one from Film Riot. It's their LUT pack. I use their utility LUT for S-Log2 footage. That's what I shoot in, so that's where I'm starting. And the image looks pretty bad. This is what it looks like. Now, again, this is a starting point, but from a starting point, like knowing what it's gonna look like later, I think this is actually a really good place to begin. 
I did a little bit of a basic correction just to try to get the color towards that Blade Runner look, which is very orange and very warm and very kind of analogous colors and all very monochromatic in a way. Uh, and so the result is that when I, I put it all in an adjustment layer called base layer, and the result is this, which I think is a really good starting point. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start really honing in on some of the details. So some of the yellow highlights and some of the vignetting and some of the contrast and all that stuff and a little bit of the fade. And then after that, I think we'll be done. I was having a little bit of trouble trying to figure out how to add this like yellow highlight that's in the middle of the image. And I figured out that I could make something called a color mat, which is literally just a solid layer of color. And so I chose yellow and then I put a mask on it and set the mask to screen. And then I lowered the opacity and increased the feather until it looked about right. And so the result is going from this to something like this. I think it looks pretty good. So now we're gonna work on the edges, which is a lot of vignetting and dealing with contrast. I think I have the color where I want it, but the one thing that's not selling it for me is the atmosphere. There's no texture to the shot. I need to create more depth by adding more particles to the air. And the way that I'm gonna do that again is with art. So I'm gonna go on there, I'm gonna to try to find a clip that has like some good fog assets or maybe some particle assets that I can put into the clip. Put that into the base layer in between me and the background and then maybe a little bit on the foreground as well. And I think we should be done. I found an aerial clip um, that somebody shot with their drone and it happened to have a lot of fog in it. And I just used like the first half of the clip where it's all just fog. And I put that at the top of my image. And because I already have the ground kind of masked out, I don't really have to do that much. I just have to make sure that I put it below that layer. And I did that and it just fits perfectly. And just that, just that amount of ambient, like atmospheric texture that it gives, it just enlightens the entire image and really, really sells it as one cohesive piece. And then when you look at all the color correction that we've done on top of that, it really brings it to life. Now there's an issue right here. We can see that my body is being cut out of the image way too clearly. So what I'm gonna do is take that same layer of texture and atmosphere and put it on the whole layer and see what that does to the image. That should smooth out all of the detail and make it look like a uniform image. I think we're done. <laughs> I think I actually did it. So this was our starting image. And here's what the final image looks like. Well, that was pretty dope. <laughs> I had a lot of fun making that. Like I had never done anything like that before. That was literally a follow along of me learning how to do this kind of effect. Uh, I didn't really have anywhere to start. I had watched one tutorial and it was on DaVinci Resolve, which I didn't even use for this experiment. So I think it worked out pretty well. Obviously, if I had more time, I would spend it on the masking process. That seemed to be the biggest letdown of the whole image. I actually made that location work a lot better than I thought it would. And digital assets surprisingly worked out in my favor. I thought that that would be really difficult. I thought I would have to do a lot of finagling with the image to try to get it to work. But it actually worked pretty well, pretty quickly. So yeah, I think if there's one thing to spend time on when you're doing effects like this, it's masking the subject. That is absolutely where you should spend the most time. Um, so as far as lessons learned, that's definitely it. If you like this video, I had so much fun making this video, first of all. So if you like this video, let me know with a thumbs up and a comment. If you love this video, go ahead and subscribe because I make videos like this every single week. And that's pretty much all I've got this week for you. So I'll see you in the next one. Peace.